So major spoilers for the Barbie movie. Barbie, let's go party. Ah, ah, ah. There is obviously something profound about the fact that Barbie, the doll who can be anything she wants to be, just wanted to be. The typical protagonist wants to be big and change the world, or alternatively, there's someone who wants to be inconsequential but ends up reluctantly, and then not so reluctantly, accepting the fact that there's some sort of hero or villain or something. But even when Barbie has her grand moments, you realize that this movie isn't about Barbie making a difference. And hear me out. First things first, yes, this movie, like most progressive-ish Hollywood films, is a bit hypocritical. Greta Gerwig is doing God's work, but this movie brought up a lot of points revolving around the patriarchy and capitalism while also giving a fat check to Mattel. That being said, the movie as an individual piece of media is quite moving. A major part of capitalism is this idea that we're all special. We need to be different to be better, constantly hustle, achieve titles, and be unique. Essentially, individualism over community. And this is coming from someone who was born and raised in the US. We're taught that being normal or being the same as others is bad, but at the same time, you can't be different in a way that's unattractive or strange. This movie celebrates what Barbie has done for women, but it understands that Barbie isn't some world-altering facet of feminism. The movie itself doesn't even do a perfect job. It still used that one white savior Barbie line to distance itself from the fact this is peak white feminism, and gender is approached in this film in a very binary fashion. It goes to show that while Barbie may have been a progressive toy line at the time when girls could only play as housewives and mothers, it's still lagging. And that can't be solved in one hour and 54 minutes. But I digress. The point is, I thought this movie was going to make some huge commentary on gender or try to solve sexism, but it really didn't. It couldn't, and Greta Gerwig knew this going in. The Barbie played by Margot Robbie, henceforth known just as Barbie, is defined quite literally as the stereotypical Barbie. She's blonde, skinny, doesn't have a job, and she's loving life. But then she thinks about death, and all these weird things start happening to her. Her feet flatten, she gets cellulite, and she has morning breath. In other words, she's becoming less and less perfect. Now, in this day and age, flawed female characters are more refreshing than unflawed ones. But this is Barbie land. As the fun little narrator voice said, if the real point of this movie was that your imperfections make you beautiful, Margot Robbie wouldn't have been the right person to cast. But these slight imperfections on this 5'6 blonde goddess merely represent the fact that she's becoming more aware that her life will never change even if it is perfect. And there's something slightly unfulfilling about that, especially when it's void of agency. Enter Gloria. Gloria is a mom who, amidst her increasingly strained relationship with her daughter, turns to playing with old Barbies to recapture that part of her life. But she no longer sees the world through the idealistic eyes of a child. So Barbie starts feeling depressed, self-conscious, scared, all the things that Barbies aren't allowed to be in the attempt to smash that glass ceiling while still maintaining some sort of societal status quo, like a true girl boss would. Gloria puts Barbie on a pedestal because she grew up when Barbie was at her peak. And with Will Ferrell's character as her boss and typical teen daughter angst, Gloria wants to latch onto something upbeat and seemingly perfect. That's why when she meets Barbie, she's meeting her hero. Barbie represents endless possibilities, and Gloria, who now lives the repetitive monotony of adult life, craves to be a part of this excitement. The thing is, Barbie has only ever experienced a perfect life with no change. Even when she realized how awful the real world is, she still has the hope of returning to Barbie Land. Now that Barbie Land is ruled by beach blonde Ryan Gosling in a tasteful faux fur coat, she doesn't know what to do. This doll who's meant to be capable of anything gives up immediately. That's when I realized that while Barbie is the protagonist, the hero is actually Gloria. She is the one who talks sense not only into Barbie, but into all the other Barbies. She has the amazing speech about how it's never enough, how you can be pretty, but you shouldn't be too pretty. You should have money, but you shouldn't want money. It's kind of like an updated version of that one Breakfast Club speech. It's kind of a double-edged sword, isn't it? A what? Well, if you say you haven't, you're a prude. If you say you have, you're a slut. Gloria has experienced being in a world like ours, has experienced feeling confused and scared and hopeless. At the end of the film, when Barbie says it was a group effort to reclaim Barbie Land, and that the mother-daughter relationship was fixed because Gloria and Sasha fixed it themselves, she isn't just being humble, she's being honest. Barbie didn't have this existential thought because she was some rebranded chosen one. She had these thoughts because Gloria was using Barbie as a way to cope with life being sad. She didn't rally the Barbies and save Barbie Land. Gloria did. Barbie's role in this movie wasn't to solve every societal issue and come out the hero. In the end, she just wanted to live a plain, uncertain life. In another time, Barbie would have realized that she loved Ken all along, and the story would have been wrapped up with a pretty pink bow. But while Barbie admitted she took Ken for granted, she didn't love him. In another time, Barbie would have realized that what made her special was inside of her all along. But Barbie realized she isn't special, and while she looks perfect on the outside, she was increasingly terrified on the inside that she didn't know who she was. 
Barbie wanted to be flawed, confused, and full of possibilities beyond the scope of endless careers in which nothing ever went wrong. Barbie wanted to be flawed in a real way. A human way. Two scenes made me genuinely tear up at the theater. The one where she's looking around the park and getting emotional over basic human existence, and the one where life is flashing before her eyes in the end. There's something so powerful about how simple life is, and the fact this dollish definition of perfection was envious that she didn't get to experience it. Again, I grew up being taught that you should aim to achieve big things and make your mark on the world. But sometimes it's nice to hear that just existing is enough. You aren't what you produce and who you know and what you can do to change the world in a massive, tangible way. Just living and trying to get by day by day can be full of so much unappreciated beauty. Barbie, this doll who represents women being bigger and better by having the latest fashion and the best jobs and a life that everyone envies, just wants to be insignificant. Her character isn't at its best when she's with Ken or other humans. Her character is at its best when she's looking inward and thinking that maybe growing old and fading from existence is exactly what she wants. Ruth saying that Barbie constantly surprises her shows that Barbie isn't meant to remain just as she was at her creation. Sure, she felt like some hallmark of feminism at the time, but we realize she isn't now, and that there's no good way to repackage her to be one, because inherently, Barbie can only exist the way she is under capitalism and patriarchy. So this one Barbie making this one decision to be small instead of big is kind of poetic. When Barbie was stepping out of the car in the final scene, I didn't know where it was going. She probably wasn't interviewing for a high position because that wouldn't be realistic. She probably wasn't going to interview for a position under a man because that would feel defeatist. In the end, Barbie wasn't off to make some huge difference. The first thing she does in the real world is see a gynecologist. It's such a mundane part of life that Barbie is so excited about, and that's kind of funny, and it's kind of beautiful. It's also funny because it makes the shift from doll to human because, you know, genitalia. Oh yeah. In the end, the Barbie movie isn't trying to solve all these big societal issues surrounding gender. Barbie doesn't need to solve everything, she just needs to figure herself out, and for now, that's enough.